Hi, and welcome to the very first Connector Performance Platform tutorial. I'm Chris Fick, and I'm the developer of this software. Uh, Connector is basically a toolkit that lets you turn your hands into MIDI controllers. And so what we're going to do today is just show you the basic interface, and then we're going to start mapping some stuff to Ableton Live. So what I've got here is just a drum loop. And what I want to do is put some effects over the top of that and then use our hands to control those effects. So just the basic fundamentals of how this system works is we've got a piece of software open called Oskelton. Now this just receives data from your Connect, and when you lock on with your Skelton using the Pose, it begins to track your body in 3D space and it spits out the positions of where your joints are um, and it'll send it to my program. Now Connector tracks your body or tracks your hands mostly in 3D space. You can obviously see all the data moving around and then it lets you send out two different types of MIDI. The first type is MIDI CC and that's what we're looking at today. That's called control change data. And that is basically a value between zero and 127 and it lets you control different interface objects within Ableton Live or any other MIDI capable software. The other type of MIDI is MIDI notes and quite obviously that's uh, sending out note information to play things like uh, samplers, synthesizers, drum kits and that kind of thing. So just to start with, you can notice that it says here on the skeleton, it says tracking, which means that Oskelton has locked onto my skeleton and is now getting information. Uh, outputs are active. If you have these two things as green, you should be able to send out data. So the first thing to look at is over here on the left, we've got positions. Now, just to start with, we're going to toggle all on. Now, that'll be sending six streaming data or streaming MIDI packets out. Um, they're, of course, X, Y, and Z for both my left and my right hand. Um, so at the moment, we should be sending out data. And if we look at Ableton Live, yes, you can see the MIDI light is on. So that means it is getting streaming data. Um, but just to double check, if you're not getting data coming straight up, you want to look at your CC output device setup. Over here, it goes out to MIDI Yoke 1. So I'm using MIDI Yoke 1. MIDI Yoke is a piece of software that gives you 16 internal virtual MIDI devices that lets you route uh, MIDI from one program to another. And in this case, it is from Connector to Ableton Live. So if you're still not getting data, go to options in your uh, Ableton Live, go to preferences, and then here under the MIDI tab, it should give you a list of all your MIDI devices. Um, and we're looking at the input at the moment. So you want to choose the MIDI device that you've chosen in, in Connector, and you want to make sure that it has remote clicked on. Remote lets you control interface objects within Ableton Live. For instance, maybe a volume fader, or a send fader, or if you've got an effect over the top of something, it lets you control all of the functions within that. Much like it is, uh, you can control uh, different objects within Ableton Live using a hardware MIDI controller with knobs and faders. Um, this is just using your hands as those virtual knobs and faders. So to start with, we're getting streaming data, that's good. And over here, we can click on connector and click on the apricot, which click to mute and unmute all MIDI outputs. That stops the MIDI from streaming, as you can see the light's turned off, and it lets you get into mapping mode. So what we want to do first is copy or move a reverb unit over into Send A. We've already got one there. I'll delete that. Um, so I've set it here to go 100% and the decay time to be around 5.5 seconds. You can do whatever you like. Um, this is just how I'm setting up this example. So if I play the drum loop now, I can introduce the send or the reverb and quite obviously it is sending um, the audio information to the reverb unit. So what we want to do is control that send with our hand. So first of all you need to decide which, which um, axis you want to control and which hand you want to control that particular function. So I like to, well, let's just say the X coordinate of my left hand, let's make it so as I move my hand left, it introduces more of the reverb. So click on MIDI. Uh, first of all, make sure that the, that the apricot is off so you're not streaming data. Click on MIDI in Ableton Live, then click on the send A. So that's where we're going to be sending our audio from into our reverb unit. So now it's got the handles around it, which means it's ready to be mapped. Once you've got that ready, 
Um, you can then choose whichever um, CC output that you want to control. I want to use my X of my left hand. So we'll, all it will do is click the learn button here. And now you can see that it's mapped MIDI CC1 to the mixer reverb unit. Fantastic. So now deselect MIDI. Um, and now when we turn the apricot on, it's starting to stream data and you can see my hand is actually controlling that output send. But obviously I'm sitting down here and I'm, and I'm right in the middle of the screen. So I'd have to move my hand all the way to the left and right in order to get that, that whole reverb turning on and off. But what I want to do is, first of all, um, as I move my hand left and right, I actually want to swap that over. So I can click on the invert button. And now the invert button means that as I move my hand left, it increases the amount. And as I move my hand right, it decreases the amount. However, I want to make it so I only have to move my hand to here and then it's at zero. So all I need to do is in the range adjustment um, section in connector, just click and drag how far you want to have to move your hand in order to have a minimum maximum effect. So what I've got here is you can see the little black line of my hand. As I move my hand left, it introduces more of the reverb until it gets all the way to the end. And as you can see, my hand's going off the, off the connect screen. So what I want to do is reduce the amount of size that that range has to move. So I'll click on the number and drag up. The further to the right of the number you click, the more finer adjustment you get. So let's move it to about here. And then as you can see, as I move my hand across, it's maxing out just as I move my hand to the edge of the screen. So now if we put that into practice, we'll press play on the drum loop. It's at zero. And as I move my hand left, it obviously increases the, uh, the send amount until it's at 100%. So that's very cool, um, but we wanna do some more manipulation at the same time. Um, obviously we've got not only one, one axis on one hand, but we've got three axes on both hands. So that's six, that's six parameters you can control at once just with the positions of your hands. Um, so if we just choose another effect, let's do a filter. I'll put a filter over the top of the drum loop. And then what I wanna do is use a high pass filter and then map maybe my Y axis of my left hand to the cutoff of that filter. So turn off the apricot again, not streaming any data, click on MIDI. Now go to the cutoff and then we can map Y of my left hand. Click on learn and then we have it set. Um, so now if we click on the apricot again, you'll notice it moving up and down. Again, it's, I have to move my hand too far. So I'll just reduce the amount of range that I need to move my hand to about that. And now I've got the full range active within my, my hand space. So now if we click play, we can do not only the um, cutoff filter, but we can also do the reverb. And that's a very simple effect. Um, however, it's the basic fundamentals of how Connectar works. Now you can use this method to control almost anything within Ableton Live. Um, and of course you've got not only the positions of your hands, but you've got body relative positions, you've got speeds and distances. And that's all just the CC values. So there's other pages and other, other units inside Connector. Um, we'll go through them in further tutorials. But for the moment, I hope you have fun with what you've learned today and maybe you can get some cool patches going. Please share any of the any of your mappings that you get. If you find something cool and you want to share it, just jump on my forums at connector.org and share what you've made. Um, really like to hear what you've done. Thanks very much for watching and stay tuned for the very next tutorial where we'll go into the instrument editor where we can start doing some cool stuff with notes. Uh, thanks for watching. <laughs>